you know, it 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 like it all boiled down to a few things which were dear to my heart. You gotta tell me because you chose Canada, so you have to tell me what is it. Um, and the main reason why I traveled abroad was because I there was nothing going on, right? Okay. And uh, mm-hmm. and it was two countries that were on my list. You're thinking so, about traveling again? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. And this time, it was for good. Okay. Like, like I wasn't coming back to Ghana. Like, okay. Right. Then I had to come back home. So go Ghana, back to where? I mean, Ghana? Yeah, I had to come back to Ghana. Like, like the same place that you left that you pretty much didn't get any job. You're going back yeah. to Ghana. Okay. Yeah, but then I'm coming back with like, like, um, like another certificate. Yes, right? Man, this is a lot to digest. I mean, yeah. Growing up in Takwa, you know, living in Takrade, living in Kumasi area, which is a Wasi area. Yeah. And now your dad, it seems like he's been very instrumental in your life oh, because yeah. not a lot of people get this kind of opportunity and also a second chance. Hello everyone and once again welcome to Presenting Canada to the World and today I have a very very special guest all the way from Canada, New Brunswick and this is Mr. Isaac Ohene Ajay. So Mr. Isaac, I actually connected with him through LinkedIn and he has a very massive profile. He's currently a branch manager at Nova Scotia Bank and I decided to bring him over to tell his story because he has a very, very compelling story that I think we can all gain from. So, Mr. Isaac, uh, before we move on, would you like to introduce yourself and tell the audience about yourself, where you currently live, and a little bit of your background coming from Ghana? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I'm really that delighted you know, to share this platform and also to share my story and also to share my experiences. Um, as you rightly said, my name is Isaac, Isaac Ohine J. Mm. Uh, you know, I'm from Ghana. Uh, I was born in Ghana. I was actually born in Takwa. Um, okay. Yeah, so currently I'm a Canadian because I just got my Canadian citizenship. Wow. But um, wow. I have dual citizenship now because I'm also a Ghanaian. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, basically I was born in uh, Takwa. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the western region mm-hmm. uh, but you know, i i grew up in obwase because mm-hmm. my dad worked um, at anglo gold mm-hmm. um, um but you know i i also lived in takrade uh, but i actually started studying in mm-hmm. obwase that's mm-hmm. where i had my uh, primary and jhs mm-hmm. jhs because that's where my dad worked right um, so after my school, mm-hmm. um, I, after my JHS, I went to senior high um, in Agri. In, okay, okay. Uh, in, the, in, yeah, in central region. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, things were very tough. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I was a bright kid, but I just, you know, got caught up with a few friends and mm-hmm. a few things which really did not help me. So when I got to school in Agri, mm-hmm. um, it was difficult for me, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Because um, I wasn't studying, you know, I got caught up in things where, which weren't really helpful. Uh, with, yeah. You know, yeah. So I ended up not really passing uh, yeah. my, my, my WASI. Okay. Uh, no, actually, I think it was um, SHS, like... Oh. Okay. Yeah, I think we switched it to Wasi recently. You, right? you couldn't, you couldn't pass it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So I failed it. I actually got, I got four E's, four F's. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. And I remember, you know, uh, when when the results were out, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I went, I went to the school, and when I got when I got my certificate, or you know, when I got my transcript and saw my results. Mm-hmm. It was so embarrassing because um, I have two sisters, like really, right. really. Um, one, my elder sister is actually the one that does the freelance science and math Yeah, just, just keep your camera steady. 
Because he's okay, shaking a little okay. bit. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, it was it was quite you know um, depressing that you know wow. my dad had um, helped me, taken me through school, paid fees and all that, and you know mm -hmm. um, pass it. So I had to come stay home. Mm -hmm. um, I believe I studied roots and of deck. Mm -hmm. uh, Nog deck was okay. I got good results, but mm -hmm. um, it wasn't good enough to take me to uni university. Wow! So what I did was I had to go to a second secondary school, mm -hmm. which was Buamponsem Secondary School. Mm -hmm. And when I went to Buamponsem, I like I I went to um, level two or mm -hmm. like form. Two. I don't know how. I don't know how. Yeah. Okay. Level yeah. Two. okay. Let's so, take this yeah. Level so, two. yeah, just to get me quickly to write the exams, right? Mm -hmm. yes. um, and when I got there, I was more focused because mm -hmm. I, I had realized that you know I had wasted a lot of my years. So I took I took education very serious. I took studies very serious, mm -hmm. and I was able to pass my uh, my wasi. Mm -hmm. So through the wasi. I was able to get to the university. Mm -hmm. So I went to University College of Management Studies, mm -hmm. uh, which is a private university. So I went two years in uh, Kumase. Yeah. And then two years in Accra. Right. Yeah. So that's that's kind of like education wise from the start. Um so um when I when I completed school, mm -hmm. I was trying to, I did business, so I was trying to see if I could get a job. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was hard, you know. Yeah. Uh, like, wow. at Kamase, Accra. Like, I used to print my CVs, you know, <laughs> Just... going from companies to companies, and it was so hard. Yeah. So, at that point in time, um, mm -hmm. I had to kind of try and figure out what I wanted to do. So, mm -hmm. I felt, you know, um, let me try and take the opportunity to see if I can study um, abroad. Mm -hmm. So um, I I went to the UK. Uh, okay, okay, just pa pause that for now. So you go from a guy okay. who doesn't study, finally go to a different school, passed it, and now you're thinking about going to school abroad. Yeah. Why? Why abroad? And what was the thinking process behind it? What changed? Um. You know, as I said, I had um, I had I had been trying options, right? Like after mm -hmm. school, you don't want to be a burden for your parents, right? You want to try and find something for yourself, you know, work which you know would earn you something, right? Mm -hmm. And the main reason why I traveled abroad was because I there was nothing going on, right? Okay. And um, I also at that point in time, I hadn't developed that entrepreneur, like you know ability in myself to try and create my own business mm -hmm. uh, so i just felt the way out for me would be to study to go out and study because right. i knew there would be kind of more opportunities abroad right mm -hmm. um, so i took that step mm -hmm. uh, i started looking for schools online i did the application everything myself yeah and luckily i i got good grades um at the university so i was mm -hmm. able to get scholarship in the uk wow so i studied in the uk for a year at the university of hall okay so, yeah i did a master's degree in economics and business wow yeah so after that i also wanted to try and see if i could get a job there but mm -hmm. at that point in time uk um they didn't have that option for you mm -hmm. to work at school right so then i had to come back home so Go back to where? Maybe Ghana? Yeah, I had to come back to Ghana. Like yeah. the same place that you left that you pretty much didn't get any job. You're going back yeah. to Ghana. Okay. Yeah, but then I'm coming back with like like um like another certificate, right? Like mm -hmm. so you feel um with that certificate, that's um a way to open doors because you like kind of upgraded yourself, right? Right. Um, then what happened? Know. What yeah, happened? I don't. Sorry. Then what happened when you came to Ghana? Um. So you know, kind of back to square one, but this time I felt more confident because I knew 
you know i had i had a degree from like another country you know like uk uk you know um so i started applying for jobs and it was worse it was actually worse than before i went what year what year is this what year i mean what is the time frame of all these uh schooling and coming back to gun what, what year are we looking at so um i went to the uk in 2012 2012 okay yeah and i complete it was a one year program so i completed in 2013 mm-hmm. and i graduated in 2014 so i came to ghana went back to the uk to do my graduation and came back Mm-hmm. But after my graduation, I had all my certificates, so mm-hmm. I could, you know, explore and look at other options, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but like I could, so I, I got, a, I got a few interviews. Not to say, mm-hmm. you know, it wasn't, but I like there were some interviews that I would go, and the employer would tell me that, you know, like I have, I have a bachelor's degree, you have a master's, yeah. like, yeah, you know, like I, if I employ you, at the end of the day, you probably would end up, you know, taking my job. Wow. which was yeah which was really strange like you know that mm-hmm. like, people would have that mindset but mm-hmm. it was tough so um you know years passed by you know so hard i couldn't find anything mm-hmm. um so somewhere along the line mm-hmm. um through referral mm-hmm. i was able to get into a savings and loans company okay uh, yeah so this was in Kumase, right? I think the name was Golden Pride, right? Um, yeah. So um, I joined the company as a credit officer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it was good. So I worked there for a little over a year. Right. I was there. You know, um, like I've, I've always been ambitious, right? There, there. I always thought of things that could do to better myself. So whilst I was there, you know, the kind of job, the salary, the kind mm-hmm. of, so there are a few things that you know weren't weren't up to my standard or right because at that time too, you know, I've really upgraded myself. Right. So I kind of had um a deep talk with my dad. Mm-hmm. Sat down and because my dad has had also spent a lot on me. Yeah. Uh, and it was time to kind of you know recoup or me to also you know right in some way yeah. so i i just spoke to him and asked him yeah to give me just one last chance okay yeah to try something else mm-hmm. and it was two countries that were on my list you're thinking so, about traveling again yeah okay go ahead and this time it was for good Okay. Like, like I wasn't coming back to Ghana. Like okay, so, okay. Yeah, this travel. Um, the main intention was to come, find something that would sustain me, something that would keep me here. Mm-hmm. That was the why, um, I wanted to embark on this, you know, this mission. So, right. um, my dad said, you know, um, if you can prove to me that, mm-hmm. you know. This, something that would work for you mm-hmm. uh, and something that it would also be less costly right so mm-hmm. i started looking at schools browsing through um i i, I was looking at us and canada right that i was looking at um i asked a few people that were in the us i spoke to a few people that were in canada too mm-hmm. and you know it, it it like it all boiled down to a few things which were dear to my heart you gotta tell me because you chose canada so you have to tell me what is it um it was just you know like i had never been to canada before i've never been to the u.s before so it was just based on research and stories Mm -hmm. so canada i i had had heard a lot of good things about canada like stability Mm -hmm. so I think straight straight away, I I, I leaned more towards Canada. I must right. say, but right. I was looking at both countries and mm-hmm. I looked at schools, and I realized Canada was where I wanted to, you know, just go. So I started looking. Then I came. I narrowed my set to provinces. Okay. Yeah, I looked. I looked at Ontario. I looked at New Brunswick. I looked at a lot of provinces. 
Wow. But again, I watched some videos uh-huh. and I I am a I'm a, I'm a low kind of I don't know how to put it, but I'm, I'm very I I like to be in low key areas. Okay, okay. I don't like like the too busy. Mm. So I always want to be in a place where I have my peace of mind where I know it's stable and you know like a low key area. Right. So and also the school that I was trying to find I you know I had not with I wanted to do an MBA. Mm-hmm. In Canada most of the time you have to write GMAT or GMAT. Right. Right. Yeah. But the schools that were waving GMAT mm-hmm. um UMB which is University of New Brunswick was right. one of them. Right, mm-hmm. so that also kind of you know had me the reasons why I chose New Brunswick. Mm-hmm. So uh, I applied, mm-hmm. and luckily I got an offer. Wow! And luckily for me, I also got a partial scholarship with UNB. Well. Wow! Wow! Did you apply for any schools in the US at all, or once you focused that you wanted to come to Canada, all the research and everything was about Canada? There was one school in the US which I applied to. Mm-hmm. Um yeah but they were even taking so long in getting back to me. Mm-hmm. So as soon as because I just wanted to you know just leave right now. Yeah. Yeah. Just go and try and stay there. Mm-hmm. So um yeah so I got the offer. The funny thing is mm-hmm. like the day that my visa came when mm-hmm. got, my dad was also traveling. So my dad was my dad had always been an expatriate. Um, right. You know, he wasn't with us, with us most of the time. Mm-hmm. So on that it, it was like a miracle. Wow. We, we are not getting any response. So he told me that, you know, if he leaves Ghana, mm-hmm. you know, that said like you wow. know, so yeah, so he probably wouldn't have gone through. But mm-hmm. the, th- that morning that mm-hmm. he was supposed to leave Ghana. Mm-hmm. What an email that my visa has been approved like everything. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> it was it was really strange. Wow. Uh, so yeah, so that was how the wow. Canada dream started. Just, wow, wow. So I mean, this is a lot to digest, man. This is a lot to digest. I mean, yeah, I know, yeah. growing up in Takwa you know, living in Takrade, living in Kumasi area, which is a Wasi area. Yeah. And now your dad, it seems like he's been very instrumental in your life oh, because yeah. not a lot of people get this kind of opportunity and yeah. also a second chance. Yeah. And now you were deciding between two countries because these are the countries you really want to establish some roots. Yeah. And it was between U.S. and Canada. Finally, you chose Canada. Can you tell me a little bit more? I know you touched a little bit on it about your application process back then and some of the things that you have to really go through and just the immigration process in general. How was it for you? Um, I personally like I use the internet a lot. Like I browse so much, yeah. you yeah. know, like video. So <laughs> looking like looking for schools here wasn't you know, any difficult thing for me. Um, so basically, you know, I just go on Google, like put in um, universities in Canada that wave GMATs. Right. A list for you. Mm-hmm. Or if I'm looking for, you know, universities with um, low tuition fee, I just put it on Google, like Google. Mm-hmm. It will bring, bring a list for you. Mm-hmm. I just scroll the list, mm-hmm. you know, pick. Yeah, so it, it was easy for me, you know, so... Like with the UMB, I just type universities in Canada at that mm. Mm. Because when I when I looked at the universities, most of them were requesting for GMAS. Right. So I didn't want to write GMAS. So right. I just I just searched for universities that waived GMAS. Mm. And it brought UNB, which was in New Brunswick. There was another one in uh, Newfoundland, right. which is the province. Mm-hmm. So that I actually applied to that university as well, mm-hmm. but UNB was the quickest, right? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I just wow, yeah. Um, so the application itself, um, you know, I had to um, 
you know get my documents ready like you know my dad was sponsoring so it was easy for me mm-hmm. yeah we didn't even pay I, I, okay we i think we paid a tuition deposit right paid the tuition fee right um, but i think that's what happened so, right um uh, yeah and we got it all the documents and uh, mm. i i did i did the paper application right yeah i did a paper application so mm. i was able to submit some documents that my dad had to because mm. you know, he has a business so we included all those documents and did the application so uh, right. the application process was very smooth for me wow so I, wow I, I, wow the school wow and, yeah wow. so now fast forward now you get your papers or you get your visa and you travel to Canada. Um, yeah. Did you go to New Brunswick right away or you live in other provinces before you moved there? And also, how was the first year for you or as a newcomer, you have lived in UK before, but transitioning to the Northern Hemisphere, which is Canada, how was the first year for you also? Yeah, so um, I would say it, it was so when when I when I entered Canada, I, mm-hmm. my uncle and my auntie live in Ontario. Right. So um, I stayed with them for some time, mm-hmm. and at that point in time, it was it was very tricky because they came up with some ideas, right? Especially mm-hmm. my auntie, because mm-hmm. when I was coming, yeah main focus was to stay in canada like to right. be very, very frank mm-hmm. like the school i wanted to study but you mm-hmm. know i had so many degrees so my main focus was to find a way to make it in canada right so when, I, like, when i went to ontario i stayed with them at that point in time they were like you know especially my auntie she's like mm-hmm. you know should we find someone you know for you to get married so that you get your papers yeah you look at other ways that you can stay you know but yeah. my uncle was also very very instrumental mm-hmm. he told me that isaac you came you came because of school right focus on your school mm-hmm. after school there will be so many opportunities right and he, actu- he actually gave me a lot of advice about the canadian system mm-hmm. one thing that he told me which i would never forget was mm-hmm. never mess with your credit right so in canada everything is based on your credit and mm-hmm. good credit history is everything right there are people that entered into canada you know got credit cards bought something did not pay mm-hmm. and it stayed on their credit and it, it would haunt you forever right so that's one piece of advice that he gave me that you know had really been with me throughout you know my successes and all that but mm-hmm. um yeah there was always a temptation to live in ontario they actually because i was new and it, it had been a long time since i've seen them so they actually wanted me to live in ontario right but as i told you earlier i don't like the fast life right like life is low key i like a low key area right so um you know i told them that you know i, I don't know new brunswick i've read about the place mm-hmm. but i'm eager to find out what's there mm-hmm. and explore so right. I told them that you know I know a lot of Ghanaians are in Ontario. Everyone mm-hmm. wants to live in Ontario. But right. Uh, actually, they were in Toronto. So I yeah. told them that no, if you don't leave there. I yeah. just want to go to New Brunswick. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So I live in Ontario for let's say a month. Right. And it was time for me to um, start school. Mm-hmm. So then I I I came to New Brunswick. Wow! And, wow! Uh, wow! Wow! Uh, and how how was it for you though? Because I mean, New Brunswick is sort of is is way too quiet over there. It's yeah. way too isolated. And you coming from Ghana, living your aunties and your uncles in Ontario. How was it for you living in New Brunswick and also your first year at the school when you first started? Um, it was crazy because um the UK was cool, mm-hmm. but. It was nothing compared to New Brunswick. New Brunswick is probably one of the coldest. Yeah. Like my first, my first week mm-hmm. in Canada was 
it was terrible like wow and, and it wasn't it wasn't as if i had not stayed abroad before mm-hmm. uh, the uk but it was very cold right and i think that season was probably one of the coldest so mm-hmm. you know the cold the cold was one thing which i think you know kind of affected me in a way mm-hmm. uh, but you know i was more determined mm-hmm. and i had a vision and I was right cool. mm-hmm. so it didn't really deter me mm-hmm. um you know it was just for a few weeks or two but yeah. once i get past that you're uh, okay so and how was the school oh it was good it was good and actually see one thing is immediately i came to canada mm-hmm. I started looking for a job. Mm-hmm. So even at my auntie's place, mm-hmm. I had started looking for jobs in New Brunswick. Right. So funny enough, mm-hmm. I actually got a, an offer mm-hmm. at a call center. Okay. Yeah. Before I actually, you know, started school. Right. Right. Which was really good. Because mm-hmm. again, as I told you, I mm-hmm. I had my plans. Like mm-hmm. 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 So when I when I we went to school and I you know I met <coughs> sorry I met a few of my friends mm-hmm. I told them about <coughs> I told them about the job offer mm-hmm. and a lot of them actually there was none of them actually sided with me on this so wow. I told them I wanted to work mm-hmm. while study mm-hmm. but they were of the view that you know um, you know we came to school mm-hmm. and we want to focus on the school mm-hmm. and we don't want anything to come between mm-hmm. our grades and because that's why we can. and I, and i perfectly understood them right right but right i i had my own personal you know because i had to also try and see if i would get money because my dad had paid the fees right but yes, yes, i had yes. to support myself and you know other things as well mm-hmm. so um i started working mm-hmm. at a call center mm-hmm. and it was so tough because i had the 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 call center had to fit me in based on my school schedule, schedule. Yeah. yeah sometimes we had to close at 10 10 mm. p.m and wow. pick a bus go to work work from 10 to maybe 12. wow go back to the hostel mm-hmm. go to the next go to school the next morning wow yeah it was very very difficult so wow it affected my grades mm-hmm. in a way, but mm-hmm. i was still i was still hitting you know i was still doing well right so quite um surprising yeah. to but so, you know not, not not to cut you off though but i think you did it the right way because if you really look at um the canadians the kids that are born here or for someone like me who came here early that's exactly what we did you know we're working and going to school at the same time because probably it helped you down the road in terms of having experience ahead of some of your colleagues and yeah i think um you did it the right way so now you come here you stay in ontario moved to new, um, new brunswick got into school did your part-time job along the way now you finished school so what was next for you in terms of career projection and everything else what was next for you um so actually one thing that i also have to say Mm -hmm. um, you know it would it would fit in in how the success started was when i was in ghana right my my younger sister Mm -hmm. had a car so she I think she got a new car and I had to start using that car. Mm-hmm. So before I left Ghana, I sold that car. Okay. And I invested it. Mm-hmm. So I sold I sold the car and invested it. So mm-hmm. that that investment, it wasn't a big any big huge investment. Mm-hmm. It was a car, but I invested that money in Ghana. So, yeah, in Ghana. Mm-hmm. So when I was here, mm-hmm. I was working mm-hmm. and I was saving. Mm-hmm. And when I was in school, mm-hmm. I was looking at ways that I would be able to be successful just after school, right? Wow. Mm-hmm. So one thing that I realized was in Canada, real estate was big. Okay. Right? Okay. So um, I was looking at ways to kind of enter that business. Wow. While I was in school. 
Wow. So, you know, um, the, oh, one other thing. So that, that call center which I was working, mm -hmm. before I completed school, mm -hmm. there was, you know, in Canada, there are so many streams that you have to, you know, you can pass yeah. to get your permanent residency, right? Right, right. So, fortunately for me, there was i don't know if it was a new introduction maybe it was there already it's mm -hmm. called the special nominee program right so it was actually it turned out to be a good decision that i worked at that company okay in mm -hmm. canada after school mm -hmm. you have to work for a year yes and then you can apply for your pr mm -hmm. but whilst i was working in school mm -hmm. wh whilst i was in school and i was working for that company Mm -hmm. That then that was still considered as part of me working. Wow! So quickly after school, uh, that company actually applied for my permanent residency for me. Wow! Yeah. So I probably was one of the first people that got their permanent residency. I got, yeah, I got it really quick, mm -hmm. and it was so like everything just fell into place. And yeah, yeah. It was surprising, wow. but yeah. Wow. So. After school, um, mm -hmm. I was able to withdraw, you know, my investments and mm -hmm. do the um, the work that I was doing. I was mm -hmm. able to buy my first home and. Um, you know, no, no. So you mean you coming to Canada as a student? Not only that, you were thinking about graduating and actually getting a job and getting your PR, but you're actually thinking about investment and you bought a property. Yeah. You bought yeah. a property. Yeah. How yeah. many properties do you own, by the way? You look such a young man. Oh, for now, I just have two. Two properties in Canada. Yeah. Wow. That's that's an amazing story. I also have yeah. another young man called Choco Millionaire. And I really admire, you know, people like you and him. For example, most of us comes here, focus on school, getting a job, and just working for someone. But you guys are thinking way beyond just the schooling and just working nine to five by actually investing in different, different areas. So I think probably, um, so what, what advice would you give to individuals then that are actually going to school and just focusing on coming to get a job? Like what advice would you pr pretty much give them? Um, what I would say is, you know, if you come to Canada, Canada mm -hmm. is opportunities. Yes. They give they give opportunities to people. And that's one thing that I would ap always appreciate about this country. Mm -hmm. If you are willing to put the ship in, if you are willing to work hard, mm -hmm. they, they, they would, they, there is vast opportunities in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, my advice would be mm -hmm. build networks, mm -hmm. build relationships, mm -hmm. listen more. Mm -hmm. What has made me successful mm -hmm. is because I listen. Mm -hmm. And I pick cues. Mm -hmm. Like if I go and leave at a place, mm -hmm. I'm not just leaving there. Because when when I when I completed school, I rented, you know, before I bought my first home, right? Mm -hmm. So when I was leaving there, mm -hmm. I was listening to people. Like I used to have conversations with the landlord. Mm -hmm. How did you do this? How did you buy this home? Mm -hmm. And he was the same way as myself. Mm -hmm. They also came, immigrated, and you know, was able to do that. So mm -hmm. what I would say is listen mm -hmm. and be curious, mm -hmm. ask questions. Mm -hmm. Those are some key things that you could, you know, leverage on mm -hmm. to allow you to know more. Because mm -hmm. like some people, like I actually encourage a lot of my friends to mm -hmm. you know, get homes for themselves. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people think about renting. Mm -hmm. Because people think about um buying a house that's like such a huge you know but it's so simple mm -hmm. but you have to know the process you have to go to someone mm -hmm. that will be able to explain everything to you mm -hmm. so once you are able to associate yourself with the right people mm -hmm. it allows you to know more and it allows you to build on one thing that's that nice. i would say in canada that really works is referrals referral canada, networking building relationships and referrals is big it's yes yes really successful excellent 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 
So yeah, so it seems like things are really, really going on well for you. You came in, moved to New Brunswick, did the schooling, got a job, got your PR, actually got a house now. So life is very, very, very comfortable. Talk a little bit about your career uh, projection, because that's also another area that I believe you have excelled quite a bit. So just talk a little bit about your career projection. Um, yeah, so um, as I did indicate, uh, my first job was the call center, mm. um, which really helped me because when I came, you know, when we come as Ghanaians, we have like a very strong accent. <laughs> so it's difficult to sometimes communicate. Mm -hmm. um, like some, when I came I initially, like I'll speak to people and they'll be like, uh, uh, you know, like they don't understand what you are saying or they don't hear. So it, that the call center kind hey. of helped me in my communication skills and you wow. know, my language as well. Nice. So um, after after the call center, mm -hmm. um, with with with, with my school mm. you are also supposed to do a bcp which we call co-op mm -hmm. so um that that was quite an interesting one because uh mm. um whilst i was in school i also did some research did a few you know and i was actually <clears throat> because i did economics in the uk mm -hmm. i was invited to um to an economic conference it's called pennsylvania it's a it's a u.s economics Asso association so it out it does like all the professors top people in economics and they invited me to present a paper wow. so i went to pennsylvania in the u.s mm -hmm. whilst i was in school so mm -hmm. and i told i told our school director that you know mm -hmm. you know i kind of was doing this you know as a unb student mm -hmm. so she was really happy so i guess it also it factored in in a way you know mm -hmm. in her seeing you know the potential in me mm -hmm. and uh, you know it, I, I i still maintain a very cordial relationship with her so um with my bcp or with my co-op i was able to get a job at uh service in brunswick which is like okay. a, um, a provincial you know uh, like a governmental you know mm -hmm. provincial yeah. so um <clears throat> i i actually studied management mm -hmm. i specialize in international business for my mba program mm -hmm. so it wasn't really related to what i studied mm -hmm. but it was still a good opportunity to learn, right? mm -hmm. so um I was with two two other guys from India. We we were actually about five. We went for an interview, and three people were selected, and I was part of those that were selected. Wow. So you know, it was it was quite an achievement for me. Mm -hmm. um, it was the kickstart of my career, and mm -hmm. um, we we were supposed to, we were, were we helped the company to prepare like um, like a procurement. Mm -hmm. book or you know like something to guide a way of doing things mm -hmm. so it, it was a very successful project actually um, mm -hmm. um one of my colleagues actually able to stay with a company um i i did banking in ghana mm -hmm. and um, i worked at the savings and loans mm -hmm. so my focus was mainly to get into the financial uh, financial industry mm -hmm. so um after after our co-op mm -hmm. i started applying for jobs mm -hmm. i got a few interviews mm -hmm. but then um i got a call from scotia bank okay i actually applied i applied as a as a universal banker mm -hmm. so, now universal banker would be the ones that would you know would stand would open accounts mm -hmm. and all that but the hr person contacted me and said you know um you know we do see that you know you you have this you have this so he, wow. he suggested a higher role wow uh, which was you know <laughs> which was really good and i um, was glad that you know had that opportunity so wow. i actually started as a financial advisor mm -hmm. you know, at Scotia Bank. wow and um you know I, and because i because i was very focused i worked so hard 
Mm-hmm. I worked, mm-hmm. I worked so hard, mm-hmm. and uh, within a short period of time, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I was, I was moved to another branch. Okay, which, you know, I was climbing the ladder. Wow, yeah. bro, I, I'm so proud of you, man. It just, you know, hearing these stories is really, really amazing. But it seems to me that you have also put in the work. Yeah, all yeah. the failures that you went through in Ghana. You know, like I think it taught you something, like that yeah. whole experience at the at the what do we call it, the JHS and all those things. I think it gave you a very, very good foundation, and yeah. it looks like you took off, man. Once you got those opportunities, you took off. So, yeah. I mean, what do you like most about Canada? I mean, when you came in, was it really did it meet your expectation? Because it was narrowed down to two countries that you really wanted to live there, and so. Do you think that living in Canada so far had met your expectations or there's something that you really, really like about this country? Um, when I entered, it was like I was standing on the sea. Like, I didn't <laughs> know what to expect. Yes. It was, you know, it was a new... Con- I, I, to be very frank, when I entered, I like the first week, I was very confused. Wow. I was happy. I was happy I had gotten the opportunity to come. Mm-hmm. but i didn't know what to expect that's all right. i'm trying to say mm-hmm. but canada has met my expectation like exceedingly wow. Like, wow this country has allowed me to progress mm-hmm. it's given me so many opportunities like i've learned so much mm-hmm. and because i work in the banking sector mm-hmm. i get first time like i learn a lot Mm-hmm. Like there are so many courses that I've written. Mm-hmm. I have so many certifications. Mm-hmm. So you know, like, like right now, mm-hmm. if even if I'm if I want to leave my current employer, I mm-hmm. don't think there would be any problem with me finding right you know, place. But I like what I do. I mm-hmm. think oh, it's a very good company. They've showed mm-hmm. me a lot, a lot of love. Mm-hmm. Um, I've progressed. Mm-hmm. Like even last year. Mm. Uh, no actually this year this year is when i got the opportunity to be a branch manager right 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 and, um, like the way it happened it, yeah. it, it, tell, yeah, tell me so, a little bit about tell me a little bit about it i'm really interested in because it, it seems oh, like you're, you're a man of an accomplishment man <laughs> oh yeah so um i've always you know as you said i, I always put in the work i work so yes. hard yes. like i go above and beyond to you know satisfy my clients yes like sometimes i would go in on weekends work because i i always want to keep my clients happy yes and they also you know that's what i that's why i say i love about canada mm-hmm. if you are genuine yes you show genuine love right you care about people mm-hmm. you know, that would be you know reciprocated back to you right yes so, i agree that's something that I well, and one thing that I've also realized here is, mm-hmm. you know, being loyal and being truthful. Mm-hmm. Uh, a Canadian might, will trust you, but you know, if you break that trust, yes, or you, you know, yeah, yeah. So, um, in terms of that rule, yeah, like I, I exceed, I had, I had always exceeded my goals. Yes. so you know, it, it wasn't on notice, right? Like all mm-hmm. my coaching. My branch manager, like everyone was happy to have me in their team. Wow. And so um I knew the the district vice president too. <clears throat> I think I just had a conversation with him. Yeah. I told him that, you know, like I would like to progress. Yes, of course. I like of to course. progress yeah. in my role. Yeah. And he, he told me, you know, what what do you want what do you want to do? Yes. And, uh, we had that conversation and <laughs> Within a short space of time, you know, the, uh, the, the, the rest, the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, the rest is history. Yeah, so that that was how it all came about. And actually, I might say that I'm very grateful. Um, mm-hmm. He's such a genuine guy. Yeah. You know, he, if you see him, you wouldn't even think he's humble. He's yeah. Such a very nice guy. And yeah. actually, I started the road in June, and my branch, mm-hmm. it's the best branch in atlantic we are 
Wow. Top ten percent in Atlantic Canada. Wow! 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 That's yeah. that's a favor. That's a favor of God, man. That's a favor. Oh yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. It's, it's yeah. just been, and my I have a very good team. You know, yes. With each other, we work together. Yeah. Everything is going well. That's good. That's good. I think your your mom and your dad must be really really proud of you. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The day the day that I told my sisters about me getting that bright like i even called some of my friends and they thought i was joking yes 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 to be yes. a bright like i'm the first like in here like mm. from the branches i don't know about the other banks but the bank mm. that i work i'm the mm. first like african branch wow not not just uh the first african wow that's yeah. that speaks a lot of volume man yeah that speaks yeah. a lot of volume so bro as i said i'm really really proud of you but um let's reflect back a little bit now i mean you had quite a bit of roots in ghana as well so as a young man very talented young man with all the experiences that you have acquired now what is the future looking for you in terms of ghana and africa in general based on what you have learned in Canada are you willing to go back home to how at this point or at some point in general you might look back home and go help what is the future looking for you right now um i've always you know home ghana is always home right and right i always have it at the back of my mind one mm-hmm. day i would want to you know Mm. Um, go back home settle home mm. um, i have my own personal you know investments that um mm. i have there um you know my dad also has a business which you know maybe uh but but in terms of me myself mm. um yeah i would want to establish a business in ghana for sure right mm. there are a few things that i've actually been thinking of mm. um, i'm just waiting for the right time mm. so that you know but it's something that um, I'm mm. eager to do and uh, not, you know, even in the long term. Mm. Uh, I mean, the short term, I plan to start some business mm. over mm. in Ghana. Um, mm. I think Ghana, Ghana is a land of opportunities, but right. you also have to be careful. Mm. Uh, you, anything that you want to start in Ghana, you have to do a lot of research. Yes. Because um for you to put resources like if you want to start any business you just yes. you don't you don't just go in right? right. You have to ask people, mm. look at industry players, do a mm. lot of research and see how best you know that would work for you. Mm. Um so I've been speaking to people over there. My dad is there. My dad is a businessman. Mm. Um, I speak to him most of the time. As you said, my dad has been very instrumental in my life. Yes. And he still is, you know. Like yeah. some people say when you get to a certain point you know you have to but i have a very good relationship with my dad yeah and and that's how it should be right yeah yeah yeah. and i would also i plan to be you know in the life of my children Mm -hmm. children. yeah so Mm -hmm. um, that's me and that's my own personal opinion but yeah uh, Yeah. i I believe i believe you know there is there are always opportunities Mm. yeah yeah, yeah that's good that's good man that's good that's good man but um also i mean with all the experiences and what you have gone through uh i know there's a lot of audiences watching us that will also would like to migrate to canada and what would be your advice for them in terms of what to do to also get to this land of opportunity what would you advise them not just ghana in general but across africa and across the globe what would be advice for them um i'll say you know link 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 up with the right people mm-hmm. uh because a lot of people want to travel mm-hmm. there are also a lot of frosters people that are trying to scam people mm-hmm. um you know just beware of people that are always requesting for money you know mm-hmm. to help you mm-hmm. um and a lot of things i would encourage the youth that do a lot of research mm-hmm. like there are so many like the internet or social media, whatever we have mm. in our age, mm. the same way we, you know, we are wasting time looking at, you know, like using social media for, you know, I would, I don't want to say unnecessary purposes. Yeah, entertainment, entertainment. Yeah, they, they could be put to a lot of use. Mm. Like anything that you want to find out, you could literally just go to Google mm-hmm. and just search about it. Mm. If you need help contact people ask people questions you know mm. like there, there are so many resources that are available 
like mm. i even had to come to canada mm. before i realized there are there are so many ways of entering canada mm -hmm. they can even enter canada as a permanent resident you okay. can get your permanent resident in ghana before you actually enter canada wow. so there are so many streams that you can use to enter canada people mm -hmm. think it's only school mm -hmm. but you can so canada is you know based on the point system right mm -hmm. you, if you if you have like work experience mm -hmm. if you have education elsewhere mm -hmm. you, could, you could just you know put in google mm -hmm. um, the canadian point system mm -hmm. and you can literally go in it would ask you a few questions mm -hmm. you answer them and it, it will tell you your points mm -hmm. and in canada once you have the points that requires you to be in the stream Mm -hmm. call to apply for you know your, you know or to apply for the express entry right mm -hmm. so my advice to young folks would be mm -hmm. just to just just be curious mm -hmm. research mm -hmm. find out ask more questions mm -hmm. because information is key mm -hmm. you don't know something it's hard mm -hmm. for you to you know follow through it but yeah. once you start researching Mm -hmm. and you actually you get an idea mm -hmm. then you can dwell on that or follow up on that mm -hmm. and that will lead you more to you know what you are looking for mm -hmm. so i'd say use social media mm -hmm. you know facebook mm -hmm. uh, google mm -hmm. instagram whatever you know there, there is like like my university they are on instagram they are they are everywhere mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know so the same way that you would follow all the social media activities mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, channel that energy towards you know career growth mm -hmm. you know, opportunities and those are ways that you know um, would make you successful and you know if anyone wants to contact someone in canada i am always open mm -hmm. to help anyone who has any questions you know mm. or yeah yeah, I think that was probably going to be my next question to you was like, if you're open, if people are, I'm going to put your uh, details in the description below. So if people are willing to connect with you, yeah, you so, can really so. show them the path. Yeah, because I think this has been really an eye opener for me. I've done quite a bit of interview, but this one is extraordinary. Just listening to your story and where you started and where you have ended up and even with the favor of God upon you, I think it's probably more growth ahead of you. And as <laughs> as you still remain uh, the humble and just as you saying, make the network, don't burn bridges, yeah. and just work hard and just be trustworthy. This yeah. this is all it takes to survive in Canada. And I think you're already on the right path. So I really really thank you very much for your time. If you have any last word for the audience, uh, you probably can go for it. And I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I would say, um, first of all, you know, um, it's been a journey. I want to thank my parents. Mm -hmm. um, number one, at first, no, first of all, I want to thank God. Yes, um, yes. Yeah, without God, nothing is impossible. Like nothing mm -hmm. is, you know, mm -hmm. with Him, everything is possible, right? Yes. Uh, I'd like to thank God. I'd like to thank my family, my dad, my mom, my siblings, mm -hmm. my friends. Anyone who supported me in this journey, mm -hmm. uh, I want to thank them. I also want to thank, you know, the universities that I attended, you know, lecturers, teachers, mm -hmm. everyone who has been part of my success. I'm mm -hmm. really grateful. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the support that everyone gave to me. Mm -hmm. I also want to thank you for you know, <laughs> kind of. having me on your channel. I, I've yeah. seen that you are, you are doing a very good job. I appreciate it. I appreciate I pray it. That very soon you know your channel will be everywhere and i would actually i i will direct a few people to your channel like a few of my friends are actually eager to see appreciate it what i would share on this channel because yes. you know, i have a lot of friends here yeah it's work here so mm -hmm. you will definitely cross paths again yeah for sure they won't be disappointed man this was really wonderful mr isaac uh, enjoy the rest of your day thank you very much thank you sir have a good one